Hey guys, what's up everybody, Sandu here. And today I'll be testing a brand new dynamic driver only IAM by the name of Fire FD5. The data costing 320 bucks. And after listening to them for four days straight and after running a full set of measurements, I do think that we have a pretty strong contender for some of the nicest IAMs under 400 bucks. So let's get it started. Design is always a very subjective thing, but in my opinion, these are one of the best looking IAMs fire released as of late. Its shell is made out of polished stainless steel. It's a little heavier than any other IAMs fire released so far, but I really like the added weight as it gives an impression of a higher quality product. FD5 is a semi-open design, and if you would closely inspect the outer cover, you can spot some tiny holes in it so that the air access behind the driver would move outside, lowering the distortion and increasing the perception of air in your music. The IAM shell does also have a small hole in it that will remove the air pressure between your ear canal and the IAM body for a much better comfort long term. This stock nozzle has a length and a diameter of 5mm, so you can easily use your growing ear tip collection. FD5 is using a detachable cable, it's very flexible, it doesn't have any microphonics and seems to be really well made. Considering that Fio is offering free interchangeable headphone jacks for it covering all your needs, I really don't see the point of buying separately a better headphone cable. It uses MMCX connectors and in all seriousness I never experienced a stronger MMCX bond with a headphone, it's rock solid with FD5 and with my bare hands, I cannot detach the cable. As for the tech inside them, FD5 is having a single beryllium coated dynamic driver per IEM. Yes, just one, but it's a big one. With a diameter of 12 mm and helped by some powerful magnets, FD5 achieved a staggering magnetic flux of 1.5 Tesla for a speedy bass delivery and clear undistorted treble. The same magnetic flux can also be found in top-of-the-line desktop headphones as ODZ LCD4, LCD MX4, Fostex TH900 and TH909. Having a single driver in there means that a passive crossover was completely bypassed, fully preserving the signal in its purest form possible. FD5 has an impedance of 32 ohms and a sensitivity of 109 dB per 1 mW of power, suggesting that these are quite easy to drive. Ok guys, let's move to the most important part, the sound performance. The absolute first impression was how clean, how undistorted and how easy going this sounded. So there was a feeling of smoothness, of liquidity that cannot be found on multi-driver IEMs, be them hybrid or all armature ones. And the same feelings I had with their EM5 earbuds that also had this amazing flow. Uh, that was binding all those notes together, creating music instead of an amalgam of sounds. After listening to multi-driver IEMs for several months and then switching back to FD5, uh, the immediate feeling is that everything is coming precisely at the same time, uh, from the same spot in a very natural, very undistorted way. So the bass was also quite interesting because it felt uh, quite airy and ethereal, but also strong and quite muscular. The sound stage is well spread, there is a decent amount of air around the notes. Uh, what was interesting is that this never sounded inside my head, but mostly outside it, creating a pretty nice 3D image in front of me. Uh, with all that said, this didn't sound exactly wide open, like I would experience with uh, open back desktop headphones, and more like semi-open desktop headphones like uh, Olo S4X or Harmonic Dyne Zeus. Uh, I'm burning them in for about uh, four days now with uh, portable and desktop power and every time I would pick them up uh, unwillingly I'll start shaking my head to the rhythm of the music and FD5 is not a headphone that wants to disappear from your music but on the contrary it always screams for your attention when a bass or treble note is hitting your eardrums. In terms of power requirements these are not the most sensitive IMs that I have tried so far. They actually need a little bit more power compared to some uh, desktop headphones like a Kenerton Gallarhorn and Kenerton Magni, which is a little bit unusual but understandable since a smaller driver will need uh, more juice to achieve the same sound pressure level of a bigger driver. 
With all that said, please remember that these are still small and portable and of course not a lot of power is uh, needed to drive these to very deafening levels. Even a common source like a, a smartphone or a laptop or a tablet is more than enough to drive these to very loud levels. My smartphone still has a headphone jack and at about 80% it was already too loud. And a laptop, it was at about 70% for the same sound pressure level. I have also tried them with portable dabs, which obviously sounded much, much better than common audio sources that I've mentioned before. Uh, but I'm recommending still a faster sounding and a snappier and a punchier sounding source to you. From Fire offerings, uh, I think that Fire BTR5, um, M11 Pro, M15, Q3 and Q5 TS, TC would sound absolutely amazing with them and less so with uh, the regular M11 and with M5, which are not as fast sounding. I have also tried them with uh, portable and desktop headphone amplifiers and they sounded pretty much the same as they did on the go. But the fastest and uh, the most enjoyable sound was experienced out of a benchmark HPA4, SMSL SP400, SH9, Topping A90 and A50S. So take that into consideration. As for the transient response, while well, indeed FD5 has a longer natural decay compared to multi-driver IEMs like uh, hybrid ones, like uh, older mature ones, I had a total blast while listening to some electronica tracks. I just finished random access memories for the third time now and I was simply hooked to that full-bodied bass performance, to that well-defined bass. Uh, sure, it was a little bit more of it, it had more mid-bass, it had a longer decay, but it was also super clean, super visceral, uh, very well layered and that worked absolutely amazing with music like this. All types of rock and metal sounded simply alive and really ass kicking. And while uh, these are not uh, pressing the gas pedal so often and are not on the hurry how multi-driver hybrids are for example, uh, I do think that uh, they know how to land some punches at the right moment. And while the speed is okay only, I think that the slam is much better on this one. And I wouldn't expect less out of a 1.5 Tesla magnet. No matter what the music I would be playing, the bass always carried more air, uh, it had more weight to it, uh, more heft, and that translated into an extremely fun and engaging sound signature. As for the sound stage, uh, it's quite simple. So FD5 is a semi-open design and it also moves a little bit more air down low in the bass and that always translates into a bigger sound than usual. Uh, this is where FD5 uh, is winning a lot of uh, lost to ground compared to hybrid uh, IEMs. And when it comes to stage size from the FIO portfolio, I'm putting uh, EM5 earbuds as numero uno followed by FD5 and then by its pricier siblings like FH7 and FA9. Yes, my friends, FD5 is bigger sounding than its much pricier siblings, as everything just sounds outside my head and not inside it. Deutsche Grammophon is one of the best, if not the best, label when it comes to classical music. And they just released a new album called uh, Echoes by uh, Sinum Saxophone Quartet. Uh, please give it a try, even if you are not into classical, I am not into classical, but it's something else entirely. And with this album, with FD5 in my ears, uh, I, I, I was swearing that I was listening to a high-end open back uh, desktop headphone. It sounded simply grand, uh, it was huge, the notes were flying in all directions, I was simply surrounded by all that. There was an eerie feeling of uh, silence between all those notes. There was a lot of air and a lot of tiny micro details that uh, felt so crisp and so real. But when I moved to regular IEMs, it wasn't as grand and as open as if the windows towards music were half open. As for the tail retrieval, Fire used a very capable driver in here. It's a beryllium over carbon driver and it really shows when you start listening to some higher quality material like the one that I've mentioned before. So I went ahead and tried overdriving this to much higher levels like 95 and 100 dB. And I have listened to one minute and then to several seconds to that 100 dB signal. This might sound weird to you, but all the best headphones, all the most detailed headphones, the lowest distortion headphones, didn't have any issues while being overdriven at a higher signal. And I was curious if FD5 would do the same. So, uh, 
I was a little bit shocked that uh, FD5 had a lower distortion compared to FD1, to FH1S, to FH3, to FH7, to FA9, to all five IEMs. And I'm very comfortable saying this that uh, FD5 has one of the lowest distortions that I have uh, ever heard, uh, even measured. I'll be measuring them very soon, stay tuned for that. These are holding together pretty nicely even at much higher volumes without the notorious uh, driver fart that you can hear with low-fi and with mid-fi IEMs. So FD5 are always clean sounding, detailed sounding. Uh, you, they can show to you the smallest details, uh, the tiniest micro details pretty easily. A huge helping hand also gives the most sensitive part of our hearing, so somewhere between 4 and 6 kHz that is slightly more detailed, slightly more elevated, that gives an impression of a higher transparency, of uh, sharper notes, and of more air around those notes. Okay guys, so moving on to the frequency response. Uh, the sub bass felt really impressive even starting with uh, 20 Hz. I didn't run any 20 Hz sweep tones because those were very, very present in my tunes, so very obvious from the start. The bass performance of FD5 is nothing short of spectacular, actually it's uh, linear, it's fast, it hits hard, uh, there aren't any traces of distortion and it always felt very clean. It's a briefing type of bass and if there are layers and sub layers of bass in your music, FD5 can easily show that to you. Uh, there are actually not a lot of bad things I can say about FD5 in terms of bass performance because they remind me quite a lot about uh, planar bass. Mid bass feels pretty much the same. It's slightly elevated and makes an appearance the most in my tunes. Uh, it's by hair higher in intensity compared to all other sounds and that is fine by me. Mid range on the other hand felt like a double edged sword. On one hand the lower and the mid section felt uh, really defined in line with what I'd call as linear sounding. Uh, jazz and classical music still had that uh, mid section vibe, uh, emotion would still run through my veins. Uh, with such music, it was almost a soul-grabbing experience, but not quite there yet. So uh, violins had a pretty nice vibration, but those didn't sound so real and so uh, believable to me. On the other side, the upper mid-range sees a slope and a roll-off that intensifies the hollow effect. As for the treble, sometimes it goes a little bit overboard, uh, but only by a little and only in very short bursts. Forget about that nasty, no listen it uh, brightness, forget about uh, raw, chi-fi, unpolished sound, because that is not the case in here. The only bad thing I can say about this treble performance is that it has a higher intensity than usual. Uh, however, I cannot find uh, excessive ringing in here, there is no bloat, uh, there is no distortion, there is no lack of uh, refinement, that is not the case. Treble is boosted in the most sensitive part of our hearing. Some might like that and some might not, but for me that is a fresh new sound as my other IMs are not performing like this. I have also run a full set of measurements using a mini DSP ear system, so everything from frequency response, total harmonic distortion, spectral decay, waterfall and spectrogram. But since I don't like uh, long and boring reviews, I strongly recommend checking my full analysis in the link that I put below. As for the conclusion, FD5 awoke a very distant memory for me when I was listening for the first time to the Sennheiser IE800 uh, several years ago. Nobody believed that a single driver dynamic IEM could outperform top of the line multi driver IEMs until Sennheiser proved everybody's wrong. FD5 stomped over Pricer IEMs by offering a higher degree of detail retrieval, uh, a much lower distortion, and of course, a much uh, speedier uh, diaphragm control. Its soundstage capabilities are also up there with the nicest I've experienced uh, in IM form. Its V-shaped tuning strictly follows the Harmon curve that might not be to everybody's liking, but I find it quite unique and fresh sounding. Okay guys, my full in-depth review is waiting on my website. In case you want to support this channel, please subscribe to it and as usual, listen to my music, be positive and I'll see you soon. Cheers! Bye bye!